you know, I don't see my, I, I no longer see my depression as an illness that is an incredible gift. And I know this sounds really hard to, for people to understand, but through it, I have made some wonderful friends. And I've had the opportunity to share with people that I work with. Um, I think because I have lived with depression for so long, I have an ability to see when someone else is struggling in their personal life. And um, it's amazing how open people will be with you if you just ask them, how are you doing? I see you're not doing too well today. Would you like to talk? And um, I have a lot of employees who, over the years who have talked to me about their, um, about their life and shared their problems. And, I, I think it's been a ministry that I've been given, and I'm happy to live with it. Any other impacts on your personal or professional life that you haven't mentioned in terms of the depression? Sure. The, the downs, when, when, I, when I've been down with depression, I'm sure it's impacted my family in, uh, in all sorts of ways. You know, I was raising young children, and there were days where I didn't want to do anything. Um, days where I didn't have the energy to get up and... Uh, and be the dad I'd like to be. And, uh, there are days I, I know that um, I haven't been able to go to work. I have not been able to do that. But there are people who suffer with um, all sorts of illnesses that have those same problems. And uh, if you can look at it as a illness, if you look it, I think you can see it's possible to live through it. It's possible to... Um, to gain a lot from it, not just to be held down by it. Yeah. When did you decide that you were going to speak publicly about this, and, and why did you decide to do that? Well, I've, for a long time, 10, 12 years, I've been open to talking to individuals that I've seen um, in need of help and counseling. But I think it was about six years ago, I read story in the Washington Post and it was a story about Wes Foster and if you don't know Wes Foster he's a man that owns Long and Foster one of the most successful businessmen in this country and he was very public he went so public that the Washington Post wrote a huge four or five page story about his life and living with depression and uh, <coughs> a man that I admired I've worked through, through the newspaper business and through uh, the internet business. I've worked uh, with Wes's company and I admired him tremendously. I didn't know that he lived with depression until he exposed it in, in the newspaper. And I think that gave me the courage to say I can help people uh, by being public about it as well. Mary Jane, you've gone through the tragedy of, of losing your husband a few years ago. And I knew Bob, and we talked about how many people who know Nick might not realize that he was dealing with this. I had no idea that Bob was dealing with this. Did you find that to be the case among a lot of folks who knew him? Absolutely. Um, can you hear me? Bob suffered with depression, I think, since he was a teenager. But it, would, it, was, it was interesting. It would come in the winter, just every year. And he saw a therapist, he took some medication, and, and you increase the medication when it was there, and then you wean yourself off of it and it would go away. And then five or six years went by and it didn't have it at all. And then it came back again. He he, he was the term he did the same thing, exercise, just determined to to, to for it to beat it. And um, he hated taking the medicine because if you see the ads on TV, every side effect you see is bad. The medicine is not easy. And so, and he saw, he did see a therapist on a regular basis. But two years ago, it came back with a vengeance. Just the most horrible case he'd ever had. And the medication is tricky. And it's take more, take less, don't take this, take this. It was, I called it a cocktail, a lethal cocktail, so much medication. And he, nothing worked. We saw the therapist three times a week. Just nothing worked. It was just the most horrible case. He just could not get it under control. And I had decided 
the weekend before he died, on, the Friday before he died on Saturday, that we I called the doctor myself and said, I think there's too much medication. This is ridiculous. It's just, you know, I don't know what's going on. And so Monday, I was going to take him to Richmond to the therapist and get him off of everything and try to start all over, and we just never got there. So you and Bob knew about this pretty much through your whole marriage. And he was, a, he was a nice, depressed person. <laughs> I mean, he was a calm, he was very successful, real smart, advanced uh, MBA. I mean, you know, yeah, we knew about it. We just kind of worked through it. There were times, though, that I I just want to shake him and say, how can you, you know, this really smart person, how can this happen? It, it's hard for a a well mind to understand what a sick mind is going through. I'd have to stop and think, you know, really stop myself and say, don't. You know, I tried to work with him. I tried to read about it, understand it. Did you ever, did you ever feel like you really got to the point where you understood what it must have been like? For him? No, no, I really didn't. No. Oh. Uh, Anything you would suggest to people in the audience who uh, suspect that a friend or family member may be suffering from depression? Anything that, in terms of what they might say or what they might do, that you might recommend from your experience? I, I, it's a, it's tough because I, I, I know somebody now. I think is something I, a child, and I approached the mother who, who didn't want to hear a thing about, it. but. I think you have to, I think if you suspect, you just have to approach the person, whether they get mad at you or not. Because it takes a combination of therapy and medicine. And it's a lifelong struggle. But I think, I think now I, I would not approach anybody. Hey, do you mind if I yeah. Absolutely, yeah. please. Because uh, I'm the only one on the panel, I, would, uh, I don't know this for sure, but I'm guessing I'm the only one on the panel that actually suffers from depression. Um, I think the most important thing is to tell person you love them. One of the things you most feel when you have depression is that you are unlovable. And it's not a very nice thing. <coughs> so if you suspect that a loved one, a friend, has depression, make sure that they know you love them. I, I think people have depression have this feeling of self-worthlessness. Yeah. That's a, that's a, I mean, I've heard that a lot. They think they can't do anything but you know, and, and um, yeah, you do, you know. Well, let me ask you this, Mary Jane. You are, you're in essence a survivor because you and Bob went through this together. And I'm sure people who care about you, people who love you, because we keep talking about this, it's so sensitive. It's, for some people, it has this stigma. When someone's in a situation like you were after Bob died, what can people do to help you? Uh, many people might sense this is an awkward situation. How, how, how would I talk to Mary Jane about this? What could people do that would be helpful to someone in a situation like that? Um, I think the, the best thing for me was to talk. People came, I had so many people come to me and tell me about all these people who had depression in their families or and just to talk about it. And that's what made our church have this. I went to the rector of my church and I said, for the last week I've been sitting at home and people have been coming for the last week and 90% of the people who come here told me that either they suffer from depression or somebody in their family does. And he said, wow. And I said, it's true. And so we did a three-part series at our church which was well attended on depression. And because I said that thing, that one statement, and that's why I was overwhelmed. And that's why you want to go public with describing your situation, because you feel like there are a lot of people out there that might benefit from being able to talk about this. And nobody wants to talk about it. I don't tell you they have high blood pressure, their blood cholesterol, all high, all the hurts, but nobody says, I suffer from depression, help me. I mean, when's the last time anybody in here had any 